Day 444. Today there are a lot of updates from the northeast. The day started with several massive explosions in Luhansk, which is a city located around 100 kilometers behind the front line. This was actually the second consecutive day of precision strikes on targets inside the city, which magnified panic and speculations about the usage of storm shadow missiles, because previously Ukrainians could not reach so deep in the rear. The first and second targets of the Ukrainian strike became machine-building factories. These factories were used as some of the most important and reliable repair facilities for the Russian tanks, armored fighting vehicles and other equipment. Russian sources reported that Ukrainians used at least two rockets and successfully hit the Polypak factory and the Milan factory. The third target became the former building of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Such buildings are usually used as high-level military headquarters for the commanders of brigades and divisions. The fourth and fifth targets became facilities belonging to food and chemical processing plants. Such factories usually have huge warehouses and storage facilities, which were likely used for storing ammunition and equipment. At first Russian sources reported that Ukrainians used ballistic missiles Harim-2. However, today, as more information became available, this theory was dispelled. Today Russians found remnants of a British Storm Shadow missile and an American ADM-160B rocket. On top of that, Russians noted that Ukrainians scrambled one Su-24 and one MiG-29, which gave an insight into the Ukrainian tactic. Ukrainians first launched ADM-160 missiles as decoys for the Russian air defense. And while the Russian air defense was focused on the decoy, the Storm Shadow missiles had a clear sky. And all of that happened under the cover of MiG-29. Russian Air Force also conducted a missile strike today. Ukrainian general staff reported that they recorded a total of 21 launches of various drones. Ukrainian air defense managed to shoot down 17, while 4 managed to hit objects in various parts of Ukraine. The biggest explosion happened in Khmelnytsky. Judging by the explosion, it is clear that Russians managed to blow up an ammunition depot on a Ukrainian military base located around 1 km away from the city. Russian sources reported that this base has huge storage of aircraft ammunition. Another successful strike happened in Tarnopil. The target became a railway machinery and repair plant, which Ukrainians are possibly using for repairing their equipment. But the biggest news by far comes from the northern flank. Today Russians lost here 4 aircraft within minutes. Russian officials reported that the incidents happened due to an engine malfunction. Unofficial sources challenged the official narrative and stated that even though the fire indeed broke out near the engine, it looked like an explosion from a missile. The photos of the remnants dispelled all doubts, as the damage is characteristic of a missile explosion. There are four main versions of what happened. Firstly, since the incident happened more than 50 kilometers from the main Ukrainian positions, some Ukrainian and Russian sources speculated that the Russian air defense malfunctioned and destroyed the whole unit, which is quite unlikely. Secondly, some of them also speculated that Ukrainian intelligence found out about the planned Russian mission near the northern border and decided to ambush the aerial unit. Sabotage activities in the Bransk region are already a common occurrence, so it looks like it is not difficult to cross the border and assume the necessary positions. However, even though the damage on the remnants indicates that it was a missile, the trajectory was horizontal, which is not characteristic of the use of man portable systems. Thirdly, it was speculated that Ukrainians decided to ambush the aerial unit by bringing one of the Patriot systems into the region. However, even though this version explains the horizontal trajectory, it is still highly unlikely that Ukrainians would risk such equipment for such a risky venture. Lastly, the most credible version suggests that Ukrainians ambushed Russian aviation with their own aviation. Ukrainians reportedly used fighter jets from the airfield in Poltava that were equipped with AIM-120 advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles, which have a range of up to 70 km so Ukrainian jets would not even need to get close to the border. In this case, all puzzles fit together, and some Russian military-affiliated bloggers reported that they're already trying to find the clerks that instructed the pilots to operate at an unsafe altitude. Given that Ukrainians are closely monitoring Russian airfields, it would not be hard to make such a trap, especially knowing the general patterns in which Russians like to approach the targets and also knowing the regulations for altitude. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store, UA Supporter. 
Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.